the second video in the Doc SDK tutorial series, an introduction to DIDs and writing DIDs to the chain. Decentralized identifiers or DIDs are a new type of identifier that enables verifiable decentralized digital identity. A DID identifies any subject that the controller of the DID decides that it identifies. In the Doc SDK, DIDs are created by choosing a 32 byte unique on the Doc chain identifier along with a public uh, controller key. The public key can be changed and the DID can be removed by providing a controller signature. As of now, a DID can only have one key at a time. The chain state stores a few things for a DID, such as the current public key, the controller and the block number when the DID was last updated for replay protection. In order to write a DID, we need to be connected to the node, have an account with funds to write transactions and have a key pair used to sign and control the DID. To begin with, we will need to define a few imports and connect to our development node. Start with a base script like we did in the other tutorials, and now we need to define some helper methods that will help write DIDs to the chain. From the SDK, we need to use the create new doc DID method, which will generate a new random doc DID, and the create key detail is then used along with a valid SR25519 key to write the DID to the chain with its controller information. We use Polkadot's random as hex method to generate a development account seed. In this example, the controller is the same as the DID, but it could be different. The get public key from keyring pair method will take a key pair object and return its public key. We can import the methods like so. And as mentioned above, we will need a doc DID and a seed. The doc DID variable contains our new doc DID and the key seed variable is our key seed. SR25519 keys use a 32 byte hex string, so we will generate a random one for this tutorial. We will set these global variables below our import statements. We'll now need to create a method that will write the DID to the chain. Create a new asynchronous function named write DID, and we're just gonna put a console statement in here to print out the random DID that we're going to register. In the body of this method, we will need to generate a key pair for the DID and extract its public key. We can use the doc keyring object to generate an SR25519 key and then use the helper method get public key from keyring pair to extract its public key into a variable. Now that we have the keys needed, we should create a key detail object. This will determine who the DID controller is using a public key and a DID. In our case, the controller DID is the same as the new DID we are writing. However, it could be a DID that was written to the chain at another time. Once we have a key detail object, we simply call doc.did.new, passing our new DID and key detail. We'll wait on this promise to finish and then our DID should be written. Finally, we can expand on the main method that will run the code to call write DID. It should look something like this. For some reason, you may want to update a DID's control around key pair, uh, perhaps for key rotation or for some other security reason. To do so in this example, we will need to define a new asynchronous method called update DID, and it will be called after write DID in the main method. We also need to define a second key seed that will be used to generate a new key pair. In order to update the DID's key and controller, we'll need to have the current private and public key for a DID. In our case, we generate it from a seed in the write DID method. So in the body of update DID, we can set a variable with the current key pair. We want to update the DID's key and controller, so we should generate a new key and a new controller to do so. We'll, we will use an ED25519 key this time. And of course, just get its private key by calling get public key from keyring pair, passing in the new key pair object. And with the new key pair, new public key, and new controller variable set, we can create and sign a key object along with a signature. This will allow us to verify that we are the current controller of the DID and want to transfer ownership to the new controller and key pair. 
We can achieve this using the helper method create assigned key update, which should be imported from .NET work slash SDK slash utils slash DID. And finally, we will want to submit the transaction by calling doc.did.updateKey and then also print our console statement so we know that it was successful. Okay, now that we have learned how to write a DID and update it, we need to learn how to remove it from the chain. Similar to when we were updating a key, we need to sign our removal transaction so that the chain can verify we are the controller and have permission to remove it. We can do so by importing another helper method named create signed DID removal from the util slash DID. Declare a new asynchronous method named remove DID. We will call this after the update DID method in main and get the current key pair like before. Now we need to call create signed DID removal to create a signed DID removal object and get its signature. This method behaves similar to create signed key pair update method, enabling the chain to verify that we are the controller. With these two variables, we can now call doc.did.remove and wait for the promise to finish and our DID will be removed. Just going to add a console.log statement here to prove that. And we also need to call the remove DID method from main. Now, if we go ahead and run this script, we can see that we're connecting, registering our new random DID. And the DID has now been created. Just need to wait for the keys to update. There we go. And now it should be removed. Yep, great. And that was successful. And that concludes the second tutorial for the Doc SDK. Thank you, and see you again next time.